Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how you can teach your dog to give you his paw. This is not only a cute trick, but it's great for grooming and husbandry. So, I'm going to show you a couple of ways on how to get your dog to want to offer his paw. Now, this little puppy, um, I can show you the technique of teaching the behavior using offering, where the dog might do stuff with his paws naturally and you can reinforce that. So this little puppy, if I wave my hands around like this, sometimes she uses her little feet and she's not going to do it, oh, not going to do it now while I'm filming and then she did. If you have a puppy or an adult dog that would get mouthy if you tried to get them to offer the behavior using play, I suggest not using play and instead using a target. If you had a huge dog like a German Shepherd and they're very forceful with their paws, you can use a larger target such as a plastic frisbee or a large disc that you can hold out for the dog to hit. You can also use a target that's on a stick for the dog to whack with their paw if you were worried. Now this isn't one of the first behaviors that you should train your new puppy or an adult dog because what can happen with the first few behaviors that you train is the dog doesn't understand the concept of only doing the behaviors when you ask. Sometimes what can happen is the dog can understand that when treats are out, that is the cue to do the behaviors. So for the first few behaviors you tra train your dog, I suggest a stationary position, eye contact like a sit, a down and look at you or a default leave it from the treats as the first behaviors. That way when you're screwing around getting ready for a training session your dog's going to offer those behaviors rather than pawing at you or jumping up at you like the puppy's doing to me right now. So I've waited already over a month to train pawing behaviors because I don't want my puppy offering them to me when I have treats or when she uh, wants something from me. Instead, I prefer much calmer behaviors like sitting calmly and eye contact. And she's a little excited right now because I'm using high value treats to get this behavior. If you don't use treats that are of high enough value, sometimes the dog won't think to try and scratch at the target to get to the treat. So you can experiment with different types of treats to train this behavior. Hey little one. And then I suggest adding a verbal cue and making the hand signal very obvious to the dog so that you don't get the pawing, the dog offering pawing in between training. Yeah. Here's one technique to initially get the pawing behavior. I'm showing my puppy that I've put a treat underneath the lid of a container and I'm marking and reinforcing the puppy for pawing at it. If the puppy stops pawing at it, you can start feeding the dog the treat that's underneath the container to get the dog interested in trying to get the treat out again. For some dogs, using a clear container to cover the treat with will make them more likely to want to use their paws to get at the treat. Once the dog is reliably hitting the target with their paw, you can hold a treat underneath the target in your hand and see if your dog might target it with his foot. You can then hold a treat in your closed hand and jiggle it in the same way that you were jiggling the target. If the puppy doesn't get it, you can go back to holding the target in your hand. As your dog succeeds at pawing your hand, you can slowly start to open your hand more and more and also offer your dog an empty open hand to see if your puppy will paw at it. Some dogs just don't think to use their paws using the previous methods or they just have such wonderful manners around food that they wouldn't think to nudge the food with their nose or paw at it with their feet. For those dogs, you can try this method, hiding the treat inside a blanket or a towel and marking and reinforcing your puppy for scratching to try and find the treat. If you have a dog that's just not thinking to use their paws, I like to use this technique, teaching the dog to put two feet on a platform first. So you might need to experiment with different platforms if your dog is um, 
worried about putting their feet up on something, so you might not want to choose something hollow like this. Maybe you choose a non-slip book at first, a book with a non-slip surface on, or a stair in your house to initially get the behavior. But I'm going to just lure her up, mark and feed, and she already knows this behavior. So once you've got the dog putting two feet up, then you just get the dog to approach the object at an angle and mark just one foot going up and touching the block like that. So I have it at an angle and I'm going to lure her over it and mark just for one foot. So also the way that I'm feeding her, um, I can remove one of her feet from the block by feeding her down here. Good. Another thing I can do is start to hold it at an angle like that, so only one foot goes up. Then you can try a smaller target that you can hold, first marking the dog for putting their feet on it and then holding the target at an angle. When the dog is reliably pawing at the target when you hold it in your hand, you can then try seeing if the puppy will paw your hand without the target in it. To teach the dog to offer their left paw and their right paw, I like to hold the treat out to the left or the right and see if the dog offers the correct paw. I don't suggest doing this in the first training session, I suggest doing it in the next training session. So just concentrate on getting any sort of paw movement. So even if your dog isn't going to touch your hand, you can mark the dog lifting up to touch your, your hand or the target like that um, as the initial step. If you start to try and ask for too much, the dog might start to vary their behavior. So once your dog is reliably hitting the target with any paw, then I would switch to trying to get the dog to offer the left paw when you offer your left hand and the right paw when you offer the right hand or the, the target in your right hand. So here I'll show you. Good. As you can see, she's not reliably offering her right paw when I hold the target out to the right or her left paw when I hold the target out to the left. She's getting there, and when she does get there, I can add cues to the two different behaviors. So I'm gonna call the right leg wave and the left leg bye. So I say bye when she lifts up her left leg, but I'm not gonna add the cue yet because she's not reliably doing the behavior. Basically, if you keep seeing errors occur, like there I'm holding it to, the, um, to her right side, and she's using her left paw, uh, it just means you need to get the behavior more reliable before you start adding a cue. So when you start to see the behavior reliably, say your dog can do it five times in a row, then you can start adding your cue, and then if you see errors start to occur, go back to just using a hand signal or target to get the behavior. Good. Once your dog is offering the correct paw for the correct hand, you can then add your verbal cue. So you're going to say the cue just before you move to do the hand signal. So I'm going to say wave and then move and mark and reinforce the dog for using the correct paw. Bye. Awesome. Wave. Awesome. If you want your dog to do more of a high five or teach your dog to wave, what you can do is use shaping in small approximations. So first you can get your dog to offer their paw where your hand is underneath the dog like that and then move the hand higher and higher like that. And then you can also change how your hand is oriented. So first it's like this, and then it's like this. And then you can start marking for your dog doing the high five gesture like that. Awesome. Then when you're teaching your dog to wave where, you're not making, where the dog's not making contact with your hand, you can hold your hand just out of reach. So you can have it where your dog thinks they're gonna hit your hand and then move it away and still mark your dog. So you can pull it out to the side like that or pull it higher up. Then again, when you're adding criteria, you don't have to keep making it harder and harder where the dog, once you start teaching wave, the dog never 
um, makes contact with your hand again, you can bring your hand back and make it easier for the dog so that the training doesn't always get harder and more confusing. And when that happens, they tend to vary their behavior more. So by making it easier, you make the dog's behavior more reliable. Awesome. Here are a few ideas for tricks using paw targeting. Both paws. Ready? Jump through. Jump through. Jump through. Jump through. Good. Both paws. Nice. Wave and bye. Can you do bye? Good. Wave. Bye. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel KikoPup by clicking the join button. See you later. Are you ready? You want to do one last wave? Good. Good.